And now I would like to invite the speaker, the man who needs no introduction. For 40 plus years, he has led reforms and leveraged IT to simplify administrative processes. As the founding director general and mission director of UIDAI, Previously, he served as the chairman of the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, the secretary of the Department of Electronics and Information Technology in the Ministry of Communications and IT, and the chief secretary of Jharkhand, among other portfolios. Currently CEO, National Health Authority, and responsible for managing the National Digital Health Mission, also serving as the chairperson of the Empowered Group on Vaccine Administration for COVID-19. IAS batch of 1978 from Jharkhand Kadar, I would like to invite Dr. R.S. Sharma for his keynote address on the digital imprint of the vaccination program. So friends, good morning. Uh, I must begin by thanking the Cyber Media Group and their chairman, uh, Mr. Pradeep Gupta, uh, and I have had the privilege of participating in many of their programs. So they are they are very consistent uh, for many years, and they are actually working in this space of digital. I will also like to uh, you know address uh, Mr. Ajay Prakash Sahani, Ministry uh, Secretary of IT, and of course Ajay Chaudhary, founder of HCL, esteemed and distinguished speakers and guests at the event. Uh, uh, I'm, I, want, I would like to share with you uh, some of the experiences which we have had on COVID, that platform which, was, which has been built for taking care of the vaccination program. So the first question is, did we need COVID? And why did we need uh, such, a, such a, uh, a program? So the point is that, you know, India is a very large country, very diverse country. We have 1.3 billion people, which is one sixth of humanity. And therefore, obviously, any system uh, which, which has to cater to such large vaccination program that cannot be, you know, sort of managed manually. Especially when there are two doses of vaccine, or maybe we, in some cases, probably in the future, there'll be more than two also. And, and in order to ensure that a person who has been vaccinated once is vaccinated within the you know sort of window uh, the second uh, window uh, in time uh, and that's that's something which we have to remind that person it also we also have to ensure that the person is is given the same vaccine the second time which he has been given the first one so that also we have to keep track and count because there are many people in this country who really do not know the names of the vaccine. They, it's very difficult for them to keep a record uh, of, of the vaccine which they were you know, vaccinated the first time. And lastly, we also have to ensure that the system is portable, which means that when you got vaccinated at place one at the first time, you should not be bound by that place only if you are traveling and your, your, your next dose uh, uh, sort of schedule falls when you are away from that place, then obviously you should be able to uh, take care of the, uh, of the vaccination program, uh, of, of the vaccine, second dose of vaccine, wherever you want to take it. So that's, that's another very important uh, you know, problem which, which we have to take into account. And lastly, the system has got to be inclusive in the sense that we don't need to ensure that everybody you know uses digital means only it is possible that some people will will not be literate enough and therefore they can go to the common service centers they can have a call center uh, and and then you know get get themselves vaccinated also uh, the system has to cater to the diverse you know sort of population of india and multiple we have large number of you know, official languages and, and, and hundreds of uh, dialects. So therefore, we have to cater to that uh, population. Also, the system should be very easy to operate, which means it should just require a mobile number. And, and that's about all. And, and, you know, if you have username and password, then it becomes a difficult thing. So just put your mobile number and, and, and get going. You can see the whole, uh, you know, vaccination history of yours. Also remember that you know uh, everybody in this country doesn't have a smartphone. 
and therefore we have provisioned for four people on one smartphone so that's another part of inclusive being inclusive so i think what what was required is is a very robust uh, uh, digital system also let us remember that we are 1.3 billion and therefore the numbers have to be very you know the, the system has to be very scalable which means that you know you can't just have a few thousands or or a million you have to plan for a billion population scale and therefore the system has to be scalable system has to be robust finally we also you know had to do a, an open system which means that there may be many applications with which people are familiar with and if these can be used for getting into coven then you know to that extent the reach increases and also the facility and the ease with which people can use this platform also increases so therefore we published the open apis uh, to so that people could connect with the with the system and and now there are hundreds of you know third party uh, softwares which are connected to coven and and that uh, is is very very important from the perspective of of uh, you know sort of ease and inclusion uh, lastly we actually made uh, arogya setu as our partner application since the beginning itself and arogya setu as you know is downloads have been 190 million which means a large number of people have got arogya setu in this country and if arogya setu and are familiar with it and arogya setu being used actually also increase the reach and inclusion so these were some of the you know principles uh, the the system should be equitable inclusive it should also be real time online which means the vaccination as and when they are happening it should be able to provide a figure provide a real time dashboard which is very important from policy makers point of view because it is, you know shows the geographical in interventions geographical you know how much is the population how much population of that place has been vaccinated so i think it's very important for policy makers to plan their vaccination strategy so that's also a single source of truth no no we we if we have multiple data points then we will not be able to have really a real picture and that is important because we just have one copy of the data and it is analyzed it's basically just put on dashboard so you can see the dashboard very very easily and many of the many of you might have seen the covid dashboard which is dashboard.covid.gov.in also as i said newer and newer rules get you know incorporated in the system which means that you know initially we begin with 60 years plus then we had 45 years plus with morbid comorbidity then we had you know 18 years plus now so all these rules and you know we had paid we had free then a lot of combinations there of uh, you know in, in in from first of may onwards the, the states started uh, having uh, you know 18 years plus uh, they they purchased vac vaccines directly hospitals also started purchasing vaccines directly so a lot of these changes have taken place and we are ensuring that all these changes are are incorporated in coven which means coven has to evolve and also at the same time being scalable and of course feedback and analysis is another principle which was which was actually uh, incorporated in, in covid's design now people generally say covid is an application actually covid is not an application covid is a platform and that platform does broadly four things one is registration and scheduling module which means you can register yourself on covid look at the vacancies look at the vaccines look at the prices and you know register and then seek appointment cancel appointment reschedule appointments all these facilities are available it does not bind you down to to basically a particular place you can you can go anywhere and and get yourself vaccinated uh, it also does not ask for multiple type of information it just asks you three things which is your name your age and your gender and of course your mobile number uh, similarly the the other module is basically for the hospitals and other facilities which actually have to publish the the uh, time table which means that they are basically wanting uh, they, they are displaying uh, like a train time table they are displaying the the, uh, the time table which people can book uh, them against so that's one part and lastly the uh, the vaccination module which is essentially a, a module which uh, when when the vaccination takes place at that time the vaccinator you know puts in plugs in the the uh, data relating to vaccination so basically who vaccinated uh, what vaccine was was administered to the person concerned 
uh, what is the date, what is the time, what is the place, all these things are there. And finally, a digitally verifiable certificate. The platform also issues, as soon as you are vaccinated, you are issued a certificate. So for example, if you are vaccinated first time, then you are given a provisional certificate. And then if your second vaccination takes place, then you are given a final certificate. So we have, uh, as I said, we have exposed all these APIs, which means that people, uh, third party applications can, can integrate with COVID. So COVID is not concerned that, you know, everybody uses COVID's frontline applications front facing applications rather, but, but you can, you know, uh, connect with it using third party applications. And this has a number of, you know, benefits for the citizens. For example, they can, you know, track vaccination schedules. They have convenience in slot booking. They get instant digital certificates. There's a hybrid mode of registration. They can do registration. They can do walk-in. They can do assisted registration to all kinds of, and, and there are 12 languages in which the, the program is available, the platform is available. So I think we have simplified access, we have multiple modes of registration, and we have minimal data inputs. So that's also very, very uh, important. Uh, now, multiple identity documents also, because we need identity document to A, uh, you know, find out who is getting vaccinated, and B, to basically verify the age, because today, uh, it's 18 years plus so basically we have to keep, uh, you know keep track of the age and then of course the the dashboard also has to mention the numbers as to which age group has how many people of which age group have been vaccinated so that we know the age wise gender wise analysis of of the entire vaccination program now you have full choice and time of of location uh, and you have uh, you can track your vaccination and and what is important is that the vaccinators have a very well-defined modules. Uh, the hospitals have a very well-defined module of, of publishing their timetable. And the dashboard and the policy makers also have a well-defined module where they can see uh, you know, the trends of vaccination at every end of the day. Every day, in fact, we are, we are updating the, the, the dashboard on an hourly basis. So you can see virtually real-time vaccination figures, which is gender-wise. Registrations also are being shown on the platform. So registration and vaccination, I'm sure you must have seen the platform and which is very uh, friendly. Uh, so, so essentially we are uh, ensuring that there is a single source of truth. We also have the uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, adverse impact after immunization, following immunization, adverse effect following AEFI as it is called. So we are actually tracking within 30 minutes if there is a there is a problem uh, if, if somebody has, then that is also captured by COVID. Uh, then we can track the certificate. Certificates can be downloaded from the digital locker, from your mobile phone, from Arogi Setu, or from any third party application which you use. Please understand that it is not that if you use a third party application X, then you are tied to that application. No, you can use any application and you will, have, you will see the same truth uh, available to you. And of course, it evaluates the geographical coverage. And most importantly, any program in our country has got to be inclusive. And that's that's very, very important that we have an inclusive program. So that's that's what is all about COVID. Let me just talk a little bit more about the numbers. You know, this is the world's only, uh, probably the only platform which has scaled up to 400 million in a matter of five, six months. You know, we launched COVID on 16th of January and today is, you know, uh, the, the just about six months have been completed. And therefore we have 400 million in, 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 in six months. That's, that's a record probably. Uh, we are uh, having about 400, same amount of same number of citizens registered on the platform. We have 200,000 vaccination centers, which we are managing. And let me also see from a technology standpoint, we are getting, you know, daily visits of billions of hits on the platform. So for example, one of, I remember one of the peak hits was on uh, the 28th of April when we opened it for eight years plus and, and we recorded 3.1 billion hits in a day. We also recorded 13.7 million uh, registrations in a matter of eight hours. We opened the, the system at 4 p.m. On, on 28th of April. And by midnight uh, of, of 28th of April, we had registered 13.7 million uh, people on the platform. So I think overall, uh, India's experience of, of you know, using technology backbone has been pretty good. 
of course you may understand that there are you know sort of when you have such a massive program there are always uh, you know issues which do take place once in a while and we keep on trying to solve those issues for example embedding passport numbers in the certificates name correction utilities many things have have been done in order to facilitate the people any technology must facilitate people it should not really you know strangulate them or or kind of become a barrier to them so that's that's the whole uh, approach which we are having also let me share with you that on 5th of july this year we had a, a global conclave on on covid and that conclave was attended by more than 100 countries i am told it is 147 countries of the world more or less almost uh, you know two thirds of the whole uh, you know world uh, world's countries were attending that uh, conference some ministers also participated from some of the countries they also expressed their desire to have a similar system and our prime minister actually had told us on 28th of may that we must open source it and we must make it available uh, to every country who wants it in the spirit of vishwamitra and the spirit of sharing our knowledge free of cost with the world and from that point onwards we plan for this conclave we also have open sourced the entire thing and and it's available for free of cost for deployment in our countries the countries are now coming forward and and i think soon we will we will be sort of our coven will 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 go to those countries and will will actually help those countries in their uh, vaccination programs against covid so so that's that's all my friends and and thank you very much for uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, to to speak with you uh, and once again uh, uh, thanks to cyber media and mr pradeep gupta for organizing this conclave thank you very much thank you dr sharma for enlightening us with your valuable inputs